The hunter had passed through Odin Chapel and now skirted around the outside of the round plaza, blocked by the main gate only accessible to the captain of the church hunters. As he searched for an alternative route, he could see a kneeling figure in prayer and approach with caution. The well-spoken man was Alfred, an executioner of the healing church. Alfred denied detailed knowledge of the healing church and instead provided a partial story to the history of blood healing. The hunt had seen the labyrinths with his own eyes and had already learned the true story but did not allude to his knowledge. Instead he replayed the story in his head whilst Alfred spoke. The labyrinths lay below the city of Yarnum, carved out by the superhuman Thumerians, and it was only a matter of time before the scholars of Bergenworth made the discovery. There were clear signs of sacrifice and blood rituals to the higher beings. Beings with great knowledge, beings who understand the elders' truth and had elevated themselves into the cosmos, the Great Ones. In search for greatness, most tomb prospectors went mad, crushed under the weight of the old knowledge. However, one scholar resisted madness by accepting the limits of human intellect, Master Willem. He understood that the minds of men were weak and looked to higher planes for guidance and sought to line his brain with eyes in order to elevate his thoughts. Master Willem understood power came from knowledge and for the human race to evolve, they needed to elevate their minds, not bodies. As the scholars explored deeper into the labyrinth, they discovered phantasms the invertebrates that proved the Great One's existence and evolution. Remnants of the Great Ones lingered in the phantasms, lending it power. They would eventually be used as weapons, summoning the power of the Great Ones, portions of truth slipping through the plane as the cast attempts insanity. Whether it was their greed for power or hunger for insight, their infatuation deepened, and they looked to go one step further, one step further by summoning a Great One. The great Is Chalice was the treasure they sought, and when found hidden amongst the tunnels of the labyrinth, it was immediately brought to the surface. It would provide the platform for the summoning ritual of Abritus, daughter of the cosmos. The scholars were successful in their greatest achievement, and Abritus was summoned. Whether it was during the summoning ritual, or a knowledge gained from an audience with Abritus, the scholars learned about the power of blood. The discovery of blood made their dream of evolution a reality, a shortcut to power, bypassing the need for knowledge and available to any human. Bergenworth became divided, and the scholar Lawrence deviated from Master Willem's teachings. Following the initial encounter with the Breedus, Lawrence established the choir, the upper echelon of the healing church, obsessed with the cosmos and the powers of the old blood. Whether coincidence or more sinister in nature, a baffling plague spread through Yarnum. Those infected were said to have ashen blood and temporary relief was provided in the form of antidotes. The event provided perfect opportunity for the healing church to rise to power with the hope of a cure. The cure came in the form of their newfound knowledge, delivered through the act of blood ministration. The people of Yarnum began to feel stronger, healthier and thought to be cured. Blood ministration became common practice and was applied to many ailments and illnesses. What the people did not understand was their newfound cure was powered from their own darkness. Some thought the blood was tainted, but did not realise that the beastly scourge came from the terrible and horrific things that lurked within the weak frames of men. The discovery of blood had led to the discovery of the undesirable beast. Few men could resist. Few men possessed the insight needed to truly ascend. One by one, the people of Yarnum relinquished control to their internal darkness, transforming into beasts. Of course, Alfred did not offer this knowledge or confess to the corruption of the healing church, but rather advised the hunter to seek counsel with the church if he also needed a cure. The hunter chose to spare Alfred despite his deceit and continued his journey to the main cathedral.